Hey guys, Matt with Ready Man Preps here. Just wanted to take a few minutes and introduce my uh, video response to Prepared Mind 101's 10 pound winter bag challenge. So we're here at the farm doing some prepping and getting some uh, skills honed. So I'm going to get out of the rain because it has started to rain again here and um, show you my kit. All right, guys, here is my bag that I have, I am submitting for the 10 pound winter kit challenge. And it is currently wet weight. I've got my Nalgene full of, 32 ounce Nalgene full of water in there. So I'm measuring wet. Um, Chris wasn't specific on that point, so I'm gonna go ahead and measure to where I think it'll be a little heavier. All right, so I have this old school um, grain scale um, and I have rigged this orange line because um, I can't get the numbers really to show up on camera for you but you can see a little bit there let's see there's the 15 but I put this this tape right here across the 10 pounds mark so you can kind of see it there it won't be able to show up on camera so there's the 10 pounds and we'll put the tape across there so if the needle which is right here shows up underneath out from underneath the tape we'll know I'm a little over but I'm, like I said, doing wet weights. So um, let's take a look at the bag, get it on the scale, and see where we're at. All right, so here we go. So I am not seeing the needle at all, so that's a good sign. So wet weight, I am under the 10-pound limit for this bag. So let's open it up, take a look at what we put inside, and I'll show you what I'm carrying. Now, being in Texas, I don't anticipate some, between now and the end of the year having sub-freezing temperatures um, although the weather patterns have been kind of weird late here lately I don't expect that I will get to test this thing in sub 32 degree temperatures um, like the challenge anticipates I will get as close as I can on the weekend that I plan to do this um, but like Chris said we all have jobs we all have lives we all have families and sometimes all the variables don't line up all right, so here's everything that was in that kit um, that you just saw me weigh in at 10 pounds. Now, like I said, I did this wet. I've been taking, doing multiple takes. I've been drinking a little bit of the water, but there's the water that I had in my Nalgene. Um, it's not stainless steel, but I'll explain that here in just a minute. So I'm going to cut away, kind of work through this as I go, um, and show you what's in this pack. All right, so because of the weight limit, I went ahead and did two Mountain House meals. Um, yes, I could probably get away with one, but I went ahead and did two because um, I really didn't put a whole lot of other food in here other than these. Um, since it was just an overnight 24-hour uh, trip, I figured that'll be plenty for me. Um, again, Nalgene full of water. I'm not using a stainless steel thermos on this one uh, because this one actually weighed just a little bit less than my stainless steel, but I'm also carrying my cook kit because I am doing the dehydrated meals. I'm doing my cook kit just like it shows on my channel. Um, all of that is still in here. Um, so it is fully contained. It's got the butane stove, which actually you guys haven't seen that pocket stove since I got it. Um, and my eating tool that wasn't there in the first video. All right. So in my cook kit, I have, I've actually gotten this in now. The last time I had it, um, I didn't have this stove uh, in from Amazon yet. Um, but basically, it's just one of these backpacking stoves that hooks directly to your canister. Um, comes with this little, uh, it's kind of a cheap plastic container, but it does the trick. Um, but that's the stove that I put into my cook kit that wasn't there for the video that I did last time because it hadn't come from Amazon yet. Again, that was my cook kit that you can check out a video on. It's in my water bottle kit. Um, so that's there. Um, I've gone over that. Um, I am going to do my belt rig, and I decided to weigh it in instead of trying to kind of cheat it into the kit and something that I carry with me on a regular basis because it is with my knife and with my belt pouch in the bag every day, um, along with the gloves that are usually inside of it. We're doing some work out here at the farm, so I've got those out now. Um, my Becker BK2 and my Red Rhino custom sheath, um, scout style carry, fire rod, tender, and some paracord there with it. Um, I did modify my 
um, hip bag a little bit. Um, because it is winter, I did take out the, get that in frame a little bit. I did take out the bug spray. Um, I took out the Leatherman to wait to, cause I didn't want the redundancy of that blade there. On the inside, I have added a roll of, uh, Gorilla Tape. That's supposed to be in there. It wasn't in there for the video. Um, and instead of, and down the bottom of it, I have added which finally came in from Amazon, my SOL Bivy. Um, this is the, the cheap version, the $15 version, not the breathable escape Bivy. Um, so I'll have to pay attention to that, like Chris mentioned in his video. Um, in the front of it, in the front pouch, I took out the poncho, but I left the Bic lighter and the other tinder in there. Um, this has been replaced with, from dryer lint to fatwood, um, so that's the only change that's in there from that. Um, still got my paracord cordage on the side. Otherwise, all that's the same. Um, for my cover and my sleep system, I'm going to take, which this took up a lot of the weight in my bag, almost three pounds of it. This is a cool weather, 40 degree um, sleeping bag. So I'm planning to take this, put it inside the SOL bivy that was in the, in the belt kit, and if, uh, and use that as the sleep system underneath um, one of those cheap Walmart backpacking tarps. It was the lightest thing I could find that I thought would work with this kit, considering I was taking a couple of heavier items with everything else. And then I've just got a Coleman space blanket that I'm going to use as a reflector, probably underneath the tarp, to kind of reflect the fire back at me and kind of and kind of make everything warmer. Um, a couple of things that I will change out um, in my winter gear. Um, I will probably not be wearing my notch hat depending on the weather texas it tends to swing both ways so in the morning i'll probably start off with like a fleece um skull cap or something like that which i don't have with me here because i'm out and about at the farm so i don't have it with me here but it's in my winter kits my winter box that i'd usually put in the back of the car um when it comes to winter time i did i do carry uh this is just a gander mountain uh fleece vest um, so I usually wear that every day when it's winter time, uh, whether I'm wearing long sleeves or short sleeves, just because it keeps my core warm. It's that extra layer of fleece and warmth that you can have there and, um, all that. Um, I will usually be wearing two layers as far as my winter clothes go. Um, just grab this one out of the laundry. This is just a, uh, uh moisture wicking shirt that I will be wearing underneath most of my dress shirts for work. Um, and I'm usually going long sleeved in the winter because um, I don't have an opportunity when it's summer in Texas to wear long sleeves because even though it's climate controlled in the office, I don't like driving home with them on. So I usually go short sleeve, but I will be going long sleeve most of the winter um, because I like to rotate my closet out when I get the opportunity. Sorry about that, my camera shut off. So, as I was saying, these will be layers that aren't normally on me during the summer and spring here in Texas, but I will be wearing more often than not underneath my dress clothes or on top of my dress clothes. Um, so the moisture wicking shirts are my undershirt of choice. Um, I wear them as t-shirts in the summer and the spring. Um, I said, like I said, I'm probably rotating out from between my ball cap and my um, fleece. I'll probably be rotating out from between my ball cap and my fleece uh, skull cap to go with the fleece vest. Um, sometimes I will take a, I have a fleece scarf that I'll wear. It just depends on how cold it's getting. Um, but these are just things that I will usually wear to the office. And if I were leaving from there to go on the survival situation, um, things that I do wear more often than not during the winter. So, and that's what I'll be carrying for my 10 pound winter survival kit for this challenge. Um, currently I'm slated to go the first weekend in December and I'm not real sure we'll get to the sub-zero or sub-freezing temperatures that Chris wanted to everybody to try this at um, but here in Texas I'm not sure I'll get those until January so I'm going to go ahead and try it that first weekend in December since we're supposed to have these done by the beginning of next year also I am going to have family in for the holidays so I will be hosting all of the Christmas festivities for my family this year so starting the week after that I'll have people here in town staying at my house so I won't be able to get out and leave if you like the video or have any suggestions, things like that, give us a couple of questions or comments below. If you have, if you're not currently subscribed, please click subscribe as well. Also check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, and um, look forward to seeing you all there. Um, and remember, if you're never ready, 
you're never prepared.